Hello, friends of our fair lady, Vivian. Uh, this is Miller Lyde uh, talking to you from New York City. I've been leaving some vocal uh, memories of Vivian on the uh, our site, and I thought, well, why don't I really begin today in earnest, uh, starting with the first. We really should start at the beginning, I guess. So... I call this one uh, How I First Met uh, Vivian V. Uh, I'm an actor, uh, elderly now, but I was young then. And I was in Los Angeles in the autumn and winter of 1965. And I w would rather say, to be honest, I was down and out in L.A. in 1965, as opposed to down and out in New York, because, uh, you know, you can be down and out as an actor in either one. Things aren't going so well. And I picked up a copy of the Hollywood Reporter, which was the newspaper for actors and uh, people in the business, and they have casting uh, calls in there, or at least notices of what's coming up for casting. And it mentioned that Sir John Gilgood and Vivian Lee were going to uh, come to America, to New York, at the beginning of the year, to do an early play of Chekhov's called Ivanov. Well, like you, uh, Vivian Lee was my idol, and I had pictures of her all over my walls in the South, and I was just brought up with God with the Wind. You know, we're told to uh, line up to see the film about three or four times a year in the Deep South. And I'd fallen in love with her from that and went on to Waterloo Bridge, my favorite, which incidentally is her, was her favorite too. I talked to her about that. <clears throat> However, and John Gilgood was also an idol. Most actors revere John Gilgood for his voice and his, well, his great tradition in the theater. And so I had something of a Walter Mitty daydream of working with both of them. I think in a way more with Gilgood even than Olivier. I don't know why particularly now that I think of it, but I saw they were appearing together. Anyway, I read that this thing was casting. Well, I thought, oh, I've got to, I've got to get into this. People said, you're crazy. Everyone in the world will be trying to get into that play. And uh, it's back in New York, and you're here in Hollywood, and things are beginning to look up. Well, they really weren't, but people were trying to encourage you. Uh, so I said, uh, well, no, 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 I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So without any guarantee that I would even get an audition, really, to uh, be, try to get into the play... I begged and borrowed enough to get a plane ticket back to New York the first of the year. By miracle, gave my picture and resume into the casting office and the producer's office, and by some miracle, I looked similar to, or favored slightly, the actor that had played the part I would be auditioning for uh, in London. It had played in London with Gilgood. And when it came time to go to America, they decided that they would bring it to Broadway and all of the so-called royal theatricals got together, the Sir Johns and Ralphs and, and Michael Redgrave, I suppose, and Bobby Help, and the, all of them got together, Olivier himself, even though he was divorced from Vivian. And they discussed Vivian one evening. And this got back to me later. They were very concerned about her. Her last venture on Broadway had been in Tovaric, and that ended up a real disaster. Uh, not for the box office and not for her work. She won all sorts of awards. She was marvelous in it. I saw it. But uh, she did have an episode, of one of the worst of her episodes, during Tovaric, and uh, in a manic-depressive fit... They had to close the play, and she was taken back to London and put under psychiatric care. Well, she was somewhat better and getting very restless, and she wanted to work. It was two years later.